I want to give a little a little history lesson, and then we'll jump into some more things. Thomas Paine and Edmund Burke. Many of you have heard of both of them. Many of you know a whole lot of both of them. Many of you don't know a lot about both of them. Either way, it doesn't really matter. There were huge differences between Edmund Burke and Thomas Paine. Edmund Burke is hated in this country by the left. Hated. And he is the considered the father of modern-day uh, conservatism. Thomas Paine is liked by the left in this country, as well as many on the right, and there were many great aspects to the man. But he was also liked, or is, by the left. And the reason is Thomas Paine was considered at the time a radical revolutionary. But the reason Burke did not like Thomas Paine, I've touched on this before, is because Thomas Paine was a revolutionary through and through. Edmund Burke embraced the American Revolution even though he was an ally of the crown, the British crown. Because he thought the, Amer- the, uh, the American colonies were mistreated by Britain. And he also thought that the kind of ideas that were coming out of the founders were good ideas. Burke supported property rights. He supported natural law. He supported a moral order. He was a man of faith. A man of reason as well. We talked about it the first hour. How he discussed change. Change is constructive. Change is destructive. And so Edmund Burke is somebody well worth reading. His writings. Thomas Paine is well worth reading too. Edmund Burke rejected the French Revolution. It's not because he liked the French crown. He didn't. Not particularly. But it was a different kind of revolution. It was a bloodletting revolution. And for years there was a reign of terror. Tracking down of parties, killing people and so forth. Not so in America. And Burke was repulsed by that kind of a revolution. As opposed to the American Revolution. Paine supported both. And so you have a lot of leftists in this country who will quote Thomas Paine and they won't give Edmund Burke's writings the time of day. I tell you this because if you're a superficial thinker, and you're not, but if you are, and you embrace Thomas Paine and all he stands for, you're embracing some things that we conservatives don't support. And this is important to understand. These are great, great men. But you've got to get beyond that and understand what they stood for. And when it came to the American Revolution, Thomas Paine was a patriot. When it came to the French Revolution, he could not have been more wrong. Edmund Burke, in my view, was right. So I pass that along because I see somebody commenting about my book, and I don't read his book. Read Thomas Paine's Common Sense. Now, first of all, ladies and gentlemen, you can read Thomas Paine's Common Sense and a thousand other books. Why do you have to read one or the other? Common Sense is a great essay. I don't compare anything I write to Thomas Paine. You know, these are real standouts, icons, for better or worse, or for both. But you can read both. And you don't even have to buy them. You can go to the library, presumably, in my case, and, and check them out and read them. Or share them with somebody else that has them. But I just want you to understand there were differences between the founders and among the founders. Big differences, in many cases. You know, when the Declaration of Independence was drafted by Thomas Jefferson, Thomas Jefferson was a deist. He believed in God. He believed in a superior being. But he did not believe in praying to a God. He didn't believe God would actually respond to him. And he had certain other views too. 
He was not an atheist. He was not a non-believer. He was a deist. Same with Benjamin Franklin. So Thomas Jefferson drafted the Declaration, but that wasn't the draft that was fully adopted in Philadelphia. A lot of it was, but it then went to a committee, a committee whose members included John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, and so forth. And they played with it a little bit, too. And in the version they played with, God, or references to God, divine providence, creator. There were more of those references in the version that they drafted. And then set on to the full body. And the full body made some additional changes to what the committee gave them. And the full body representing all the colonies added yet more references to God in the Declaration of Independence. Each man was his own man. Each man was slightly different than the others. All of them, all of them were better than virtually every one of them that represents us today in the United States Congress in the White House. And we have some patriots in Congress, don't get me wrong but not enough. All of these men stood for the proposition that individual liberty, and property rights, limited government and an ordered society undergirded by a moral order was the only way in which you could nurture humanity in this society. The people we oppose today do not think this way. They do not think this way. It's government, government, and more government. I have a grievance. I have a pre-existing condition. I want national health care. I can't make my mortgage payment. I want the government to step in and take care of it. I can't pay my credit card off. I want the credit card companies punished, and I want them to take care of it too. I hear pseudo-conservatives say, well, that's good that they stepped in on the credit card. They're missing the entire picture. They don't understand our society, and yet they talk on and on, and they write books, and they write, and they go on. You have to dismiss them. You have to understand this is clutter. This is noise in the background. So I come back to where I started. Thomas Paine and Edmund Burke. I would encourage you to read whatever you want, whatever those men wrote. And I'd throw in others. Adam Smith. These are not easy reads. But you just take your time and go through it and go back if you need to. I did all this in preparing this book. And as an aside, I should tell you, Adam Smith and Edmund Burke, their lives overlapped. And they were friends. Adam Smith, often viewed as the father of libertarianism while Edmund Burke viewed as the father of conservatism. But they weren't really that different. They really weren't that different. They both had faith. They both believed in private property rights. They both believed in limited government and moral order. They both believed in personal responsibilities and personal duties. They had a great deal in common. So I would encourage you to look at Adam Smith too. All right, every now and then I just want to give a little history and constitutional stuff and so you understand what a grand nation this is. You already understand it, but that you have confidence and knowledge in that fact. It is such a grand nation built on such grand, you know, viewpoints and beliefs and values that I think most of you agree with me. It is so terrible that these these traditions and these values be thrown away so easily by one administration and one Congress. I've said it before and I'll say it again. We are on the right side of history. 